Hi, this is Dr. Steve Vargo, and this is episode 13 of Can I Ask You One Question, where we dive into the minds of industry experts and thought leaders, and we try to learn one critical thing from them that we can apply to our professional and maybe even our personal lives. And I have with me here today, Adam Schmela, and Adam is founder and president of Integrated Planning and Wealth Management. And if you think his voice sounds a little familiar, uh, Adam's also the host of 2020 Money Podcast. So hello, Adam. Dr. Vargo, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the, uh, appreciate the conversation. So my question to you, as someone who helps ODs uh, plan their personal and professional financial lives, what are the three biggest mistakes that practice owners make? Three biggest financial mistakes that practice owners make. So the three biggest ones that they make, and I'll distill this down into the one, like there's one and then the other two are actually just symptomatic of the one. So the biggest one is lifestyle creep. What I mean by that is as the practice continues to grow, if we think about the evolution and life cycle of a practice, let's say from cold start to an established practice is in the absence of an OD understanding what brings them true joy, happiness, and contentment. And as we say, planning life on purpose, and they just let lifestyle creep, the cost of their personal quality of life continue to rise with the production and revenue of the practice. In the absence of any type of formal plan, accountability, intention, what happens is they continue to let their, their spending habits dictate their savings habits. And the problem with that is that it doesn't work. And you can eventually just spend your way up to basically needing every single dime of, of, of quote unquote residual cash flow out of the practice in order to support your personal quality of life, which worked great until you're either forced into a pandemic. And, and I don't want to focus on that too much, but the, because that doesn't happen that often, but where that starts to hamstring business owners is that you're no longer able to take the emotion out of the equation when you want to reinvest back into your practice. You're typically going to over leverage your practice because you don't have freestanding cash flow in the practice. It really hamstrings practice owners' ability to bring on an associate because they just get so paranoid about having to part ways with cash flow in the practice, especially in the beginning of bringing on an associate because that associate is not going to be profitable from day one, from month one in the practice. And so when there's no wiggle room there, that light, it, it, it gets it's harder for them to break through that glass ceiling of their own personal production in the practice. So that's the biggest one, how that manifests itself um, in the other ways of the practice. Uh, they don't invest in their team. They think that, oh, why do I have massive turnover in my team? Well, when you pay your opticians $9 an hour, like, and I'm being, I'm being extreme here, right? But you have, if you want rockstar team members, you have to, I don't want to say pay rockstar salaries, but you're going to have to be on the high end of that pay distribution scale. So not investing in your team, which again, the reason that they don't do that is because they're harvesting every single dollar of, uh, of cash flow out of the practice. And then ironically enough, kind of on the other end of the spectrum, the, it, it's not necessarily a financial mistake. It's just not being as efficient with their money. We see a lot of practice centers, ODs by nature, typically tend to be pretty conservative. And so we see what has, I, I feel like I'm creating this trend, this, uh, th this, this catchphrase in the optometry profession as it pertains to uh, cash and cash flow in a practice. There's, we've seen a lot of issues of lazy money where the balance sheet of a practice is sitting on a lot of extra cash in the practice because they're just not sure what to do with it. They don't have clear intention. They don't have clear purpose with that money, whether it be in the practice or on the personal side. And so all that lazy money, here's why that's really an issue because A, number one, where could you deploy that money? We talk about having three different places that you can invest that in the money. Number one, we're going to look into the practice because the ROI is going to be better in the practice in most aspects of it. Number two, it's in yourself personally, right? With that personal development in your family, living life on purpose. And then number three, where can you invest that using the practice, using the, the cash flow as the catalyst for building wealth? Where else could you be investing that in your quote unquote boring investments, right? Your, your brokerage accounts, your 401ks, your simple IRAs, your Roth IRAs, 529s for your kid's education, right? Fill in a blank investment outside of the practice. So lazy money, not investing that and getting an ROI on that. The other part of that is that they've actually paid taxes on it already. So you've 
you've paid the piper, so to speak, you've paid the other partner and it's still just sitting there, not in a sense, fulfilling your personal or professional intention. But the biggest one, if I could re-emphasize and re, re, uh, re-emphasize it and impress upon ODs listening and watching is be intentional, let your savings habits dictate your spending habits and you'll be just fine. Thank you. And I think we did see a lot of the uh, repercussions of this during the pandemic in terms of not people that weren't business owners, practice owners that weren't doing enough planning going into that. And I want to keep this PG, but what's the, <laughs> the phrase where the, when the tide goes out, people without pants on find out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when the tide goes like, out, we find out who has their pants down. Has, yeah. And we, <laughs> that's we still saw PG, that. I feel like, that's, right. <laughs> yeah, That's PG ish <laughs> ish. Yeah. PG 13. I think we're good. We're all adults. Yeah. Um, but no, but it absolutely <laughs> happened. I mean, it absolutely happened. We saw that with the, um, with the pandemic, um, three great things. And I, I think sometimes people even know these things, but they need to hear it. And yeah. it, 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 so thank you for validating these things for us. Um, one question. Thanks Seth, so much for answering that. I like, I packaged it into three so we could get more, uh, more knowledge out of you. Um, Adam, where do people find out more about you and your company? So if you want to find out more about the firm and, and the work that we do with ODs around the country, you can go to integratedpwm.com and all the information that you'd want to know about us is on the website. If you're watching this or listening to this in podcast form, you can check out the 2020 Money Podcast. Just either search my name or 20 slash 20 as if you've been refracted down to 2020. Just search that on any podcast player. We are omnipresent in the podcast universe. Yeah, it's a great podcast. If you're not listening to that, you really should be. So um, thanks again, um, Adam. And thanks to everyone for listening. If you want to, uh, or you can find the show notes for all episodes and including this one at drstevevargo.com. And thanks again, and we will see you next time. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it.